So uh, uh, you're uh, like the, the last living witness to Roswell, is that correct? Well, probably one of the last. I don't know if I'm the last one or not, but uh, there's not too many of us left, I think. Uh, this happening so many years ago. What happened? What happened? Well, uh, interesting. Uh, my, you know, my dad was the Air Force intelligence officer at the air base there at uh, Roswell Army Airfield. And uh, something crashed on the uh, uh, ranches outside of Roswell, about 75 miles northwest of Roswell. And uh, my dad was dispatched by the base commander, who was Colonel Blanchard, to go out there and, and collect some residue to see if, if this was a military aircraft or if it was a V-2 rocket from the White Sands Proving Grounds or whatever was crashed on this rancher's land. And, uh, and he did go out there along with a CIC agent, uh, uh, Sheridan Cavett, who was, that was the forerunner of the CIA, I believe. And uh, so they picked up the res, you know, representative portions of the debris that was out there, <clears throat> pardon me. And uh, so he's going to uh, drive it into the base that night. Uh, our house happened to be on the way to the base, but he realized there was something very extraordinary about this wreckage. And he wanted my mother and myself to see this because uh, he realized we'd probably never see anything like this again. So that's what he did. He <clears throat> diverted a little bit out of his way to our house, and uh, he uh, positioned some of the wreckage on the kitchen floor of our house, woke my mother and myself up so we could see what he collected uh, out in the desert there. And uh, it was 1 o'clock in the morning, or thereabouts, very late in the morning. And, and he said, well, look at this. I want you to look at this now. I think this is parts of what they call, I think he said, flying saucer. And, uh, and that had a very special connotation, not knowing exactly what a flying saucer was, but I realized it was extraordinary, whatever. And uh, he said uh, the connotation was this came from outer space, you know, from some other place. And the first thing he had us do was to look for some electronic components like vacuum tubes, resistors, condensers, or wires. There wasn't anything like that there. It was just like metal fragments, um, beams with strange letters or writing on them, and some black plastic material like a, like a broken phonograph record would be at that time. And so I looked at it for about 15 or 20 minutes, and uh, uh, yeah, I didn't keep any of it. Uh, people ask, well, why didn't you keep some of it? Well, I couldn't because it was part of Air Force property. And uh, some people say, well, you brought, your father broke security by bringing this highly secret stuff to your house, but it wasn't classified at the time. Classified later, but it wasn't classified when he brought it to the house. So he did not break secret, uh, security at that time. So from that time on, I realized that, uh, hey, we're not alone. There's other guys out there, and uh, what's more, they're... They're uh, far enough along the scale that they can get here from wherever they come from uh, to look at us. Um, just reposition myself. So, um, but then, uh, like, that was when you were 11 years old? Correct, isn't? yes. I was 11 years old at the time. Okay, so, uh, but then there was a time when you didn't say anything about this story at all. Well, you know, the reason for that is that uh, uh, my, after my dad displayed the wreckage to Colonel Blanchard, the base commander, uh, he was ordered then to fly the debris to uh, uh, Fort Worth Army Airfield work. Uh, General Ramey, who was the 8th Air Force commander, because they wanted him to look at this too. And, uh, and at that point, they realized what they had. The Colonel, uh, General Ramey did, and the rest of the uh, uh, people there at their base realized this was something that came from outer space or some other uh, civilization. Uh, and my dad was at that time told not to talk about this, and furthermore, to tell anybody he knew that knew about this not to ever talk about that again. So that's why we kind of let the subject drop, because we realized that uh, this was now highly classified, secure uh, material that we were not to talk about it, and we didn't. How, how did that feel for you, living all these years with a secret like that? Well, you know, it didn't uh, keep me from thinking about that. Uh, I know I didn't really want to disclose this to my friends, and I thought that, well, sooner or later, uh, they will let this be released anyway. So, you know, I'm not going to raise any, uh, any uh, ire by releasing the information sooner than, than it should be. Okay. So um, that, that was in 1980 when the, the, story, the story came up again uh, in, in the media? Well, I think it was 1978. Uh, Stanton Friedman, who's uh, one of the researchers in UFOs, uh, got wind of the fact that my dad was at Roswell, and he had a very special story to tell. So Stan is the one who uh, interviewed my dad. And at that time, uh, you know, this is uh, some years later, after 47, so my dad said, well, why not start talking about it now? 
because uh, and he did release the story to Stan Friedman, who then spread the word and it caught on fire. Okay, so uh, how did the Air Force react? Uh, knowingly or at least uh, openly, didn't react at all uh, that I know of. You know, uh, I know my dad uh, was stayed in the Air Force for some years after that. Uh, it uh, did not hurt his military career. I mean, uh, this is after '47. Uh, in 1948, though, uh, 78, he was a civilian, of course, so it did not affect his military career at that point. But um, but it didn't have any uh, outward effect on him when he released the story. No threats or anything like that. Okay, did, are you aware of any other people there in, in, in the region of Roswell that were uh, victims of, like, threatening of military? Oh, you know, I've, I've heard of it. Uh, I myself have never uh, been threatened in any way, shape, or form. I've gotten some strange telephone calls uh, from people, but, uh, but no threat uh, content at all. And although some people state they have been or were threatened uh, by uh, whoever it was, uh, uh, to not to talk about this, not to disclose this, but not me, though. Now, there's, uh, there's so many uh, uh, evidence that shows that something happened there in, in Roswell. It's possibly two, two flying horses that crashed there. Um, uh, what do you think about uh, the alien abduction film that, you know, the San, uh, Santilli? Oh, I don't, you know, I don't know. I, I recognize the possibility of this happening. Uh, there's certainly enough people... No number of people who say this does happen, but I personally have no knowledge of this myself, and uh, I can only speak factually of what I know myself to be true. Uh, you said that uh, there were symbols on the. Uh, uh, yes, on the. Uh, in some of the wreckage, there were some like some beams, like some structural uh, members that had some uh, symbols or some sort of writing on them, and uh, uh, that was the strangest part of the whole wreckage scenario. That. Uh, What was this kind of writing? It looked like Egyptian hieroglyphics, or uh, I don't know what it was. But uh, I do have a representative uh, sample of it. Uh, you know, I did. Uh, Miller Johnson, who is an artist in Albuquerque, New Mexico, fabricated uh, one of these beams from my uh, description, and I have one here that uh, that uh, would uh, demonstrate what this looked like. And and uh, this is pretty much what this. Looked like it was uh, uh, the beam itself was 12 to 18 inches long. Uh, the writing itself was kind of like a purple metallic violet hue, resembling but not really like hieroglyphics, but more like uh, geometric symbols of, uh, of different configurations. So, uh, did you? Uh, is that a re uh, recreation? Something that this is a reproduction of that. A reproduction, yes. yes. Not the real thing. I wish it was. Well, if it was a real thing, we wouldn't have it. It looks like Egyptian. Uh, well, that, that was my first impression, Egyptian. But uh, uh, you know, Egyptian uh, hieroglyphics have animal symbols and things like that, which uh, there wasn't any like so, that. So, so what do you think? What what the, the, those symbols mean there? What what was their function? What their well, I wish I knew. It's. Uh, Maybe instructions for something. Uh, I, uh, I have no idea. What do you think would happen if the government would finally tell the truth about what's going on? Uh, I don't think that there would be panic in the streets. I think people would uh, accept what the reality of this is, that uh, we're uh, being visited or being uh, examined by, uh, by extraterrestrials, curiosity people. They're scientists, obviously, and uh, they'd be very interested in And creatures like ourselves, who are, you know, below, well below them on the uh, uh, scientific scale. In other words, uh, not nearly as advanced as they are, but uh, we're getting there. And they may be interested to see how far we're going to go, because uh, at this point we may represent more of a danger to them than they to us. Um, do, do you think that there's a, a, a possibility that the, the, it will change the whole perception of our world, like everything for mankind? Well, you know, it, you know, for me, it's made, uh, it was well, engendered uh, interest in astronomy and cosmology because I realized that uh, there's uh, other, you know, systems out there which are inhabited by intelligent civilizations. Uh, for me, as far as my religious uh, feelings go, it actually strengthened uh, my faith uh, that uh, the creation is still there and, uh, and, uh, and uh, we're not the only ones.
Um, my last question, what, what do you tell people who say that the, the whole Roswell story that's all made up, somebody invented that in the 80s and, and you're all liars, what do you say to those people? Well, I just shrugged my shoulders and I, I was there, you weren't. Uh, I know what I saw, you didn't see it. And uh, you have your beliefs, that's okay with me, I don't really care. Doesn't bother me at all. Thank you.